Monsieur le Chancelier, il me fait grand plaisir de vous présenter le Dr. Joseph Vercreuse. Seulement quelques individus ont surpassé la contribution du professeur Vercreuse dans le domaine de la parasitologie. En plus de 40 ans de carrière, il a fait de remarquables avancées et recherches prolifiques en santé animale et en médecine tropicale. Depuis ses débuts en industrie et en enseignement en Belgique et en Afrique, le professeur Vercreuse a investigué l'entendu des parasites animaux sur les humains, incluant la découverte de nouvelles infections zoonotiques. Il a défini des méthodes de diagnostic visant à quantifier le niveau d'infection des parasites et à identifier des parasites résistantes aux médicaments. Professor Vercruz has advised governments and other bodies, such as the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the World Health Organization, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on policies for parasite control and elimination and anti-parasitic drug use and approval. He has published almost 1,000 scientific papers and abstracts, many of which are of foundational importance. He's truly an international scientist, having conducted 50 formally funded projects in Africa and Southeast Asia, in addition to his work in Europe and North America. Joseph Vercruz is a pillar of the veterinary parasitology field and a stellar example of a scientist dedicated to the concept of One Health. Monsieur le Chancelier, je vous présente Monsieur Joseph Vercruz pour que vous lui conferiez le grade de Docteur de Science Honoris Causa. Alors, je demanderai maintenant au professeur Joseph Vercruz à prononcer son allocution à l'occasion de la collation des grades. Monsieur le professeur. I will just first start to repeat my name, Joseph Vercruz, to be no misunderstanding. Good afternoon, dear Chancellor, dear prominent guests, dear graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Needless to say, I feel, first of all, very nervous to be here to speak. I'm also almost thinking I'm doing an exam. But I feel so much honored to be selected to give the convocation address. And I sincerely thank for choosing me. It is really a great honor. My understanding is that the convocation is a time-honored tradition that celebrates your achievements. And I was told that the convocation address basically consists of an inspirational message. And I thought I could speak for about two hours. <laughs> but they told me, Joseph, please, not more than five minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> I will do my best. Now, the basis of my message to you will be my career experience and what I learned from parasites. Now, my career in one sentence. I graduated as a veteran in 75 in Belgium, and I specialized in the field of parasitology. Why parasitology? I like parasites. <laughs> now, why do I like parasites? They are so beautiful, but they are also very clever. However, they're also very dangerous, but still, I like them. <laughs> then I lived and worked in Africa for about 10 years, 
And in 83, I became a professor at Ghent University in Belgium. And I have worked uh, in more than 20 different, mainly tropical countries. Now I have five messages to give you, and please remember them very well. All five are very important, especially number five. <laughs> Maybe you will be a little bit impressed. <laughs> Firstly, I think it's very imperative that in early in your career, you should make some important decisions on what do you want. Will you enter politics? Maybe. Do you want a career where wealth is a first priority? A straightforward, a straightforward career which results in a permanent job, or a career as a researcher with many challenges, incertitudes, disappointments, but also great satisfactions. It's up to you to decide, but you can imagine I would propose to recommend a lot of one. And now, recently, Fortune magazine published a list of the 10 happiest jobs in the, of the uh, for people in the United States, you will be surprised. The first was school principal, and the fifth was research assistant. So please go for research. <laughs> now, secondly, consider the Pareto principle, also now the 80-20% the rule. Pareto, by the way, was an Italian economist. Now, I learned about the 80-20% rule when I started to work as a parasitologist. You have to imagine in an animal or human population where all individuals are in contact with the same number of infected stages of a parasite. As an example, you look to a herd of cattle grazing on the same pasture infected with larvae of worms. You find that 80% of the parasites are present in 20% of the animals. Thus, if you could identify and treat this 20%, you will reduce the overall infection rate for 80%. Now, what does that mean for you? Now, back to the Pareto principle. It states that 80% of your outcomes come from 20% of your inputs. The certain activities you do, your 20%, account for the majority, your 80% of your happiness and outputs. Starts to live in 80, 20 today, you have only to do one thing, focus your energies on what you enjoy. Thirdly, you should know, and thirdly, really, it's very important, you should know that your career success depends on who you know, and more importantly, who knows what you know. Networking can be the most powerful tool for anyone who wants to achieve uh, something in their personal or professional life. It can be the door between you and your dream job or your promotion, and also it can be the support in the hour of need. Making contacts, new relationships, or even making friends, and by the way, many of my friends are present here, is related with networking, after all, we are humans and need each other's support. Meeting with new people is also always exciting. You get to share new ideas and thoughts. We also increase your knowledge. Now, the fourthly, it's something maybe a bit special in the sense, fourthly, you have to travel and go for challenges. Now, what is a challenge? Because it may change your perception of life. I took in 1976 the opportunity to accept the job of a veterinary field officer in the Central African, at that time, empire, where the job has been vacant for more than one year, as nobody wanted the job. Now, during the three years I lived and worked in Central African empire, I learned that impossible is a word that doesn't exist. Now, to be able to work in a region the size of Quebec, where electricity, running water, petrol, pubs with cool beer, shops and tarmac roads are a faraway dream. Being the only veterinarian for 850,000 cattle, having 240 veterinary technicians who were supposed to work without receiving any salary, 
where most hurts can only be reached by food, and finally to still to be able to achieve programs to control diseases in cattle seems impossible, it is not. Just focus on priorities and on developing innovative approaches. Life is a challenge, please make it. By the way, also life is a dream, realize it, and life is also a game, play it. Now, finally, as I told you, I learned a lot by working with parasites. Again, remember, parasites are very beautiful and clever. Now, they have developed systems, why they are clever? Parasites have developed systems to encounter the right host at the right moment. They can influence the behavior of the host. They know how to escape the immunity system of the host and are very productive. Now, just imagine if you accept that graduates are parasites and their hosts are the seniors, this translates that graduates should be skillful to find the right senior at the right moment for guidance, and that graduates should be capable of influencing their senior by transmitting an enthusiastic, energetic, humoristic, and positive image. Graduates should be able to circumvent difficulties, and finally, they should be able to produce a lot of leadership skills. And I would like to finish with two quotes, Gandhi. There are two kinds of people, those who do the work and those who take the credit. <laughs> Try to be in the first group. There is less competition there. Last but not least, I will speak in French, because don't underestimate me. I also speak fluently French. <laughs> now, uh, again a quote of the Dalai Lama. When he was asked, qu'est-ce que vous surprend le plus dans l'humanité? Il a répondu, les hommes. Parce qu'ils perdent la santé pour accumuler de l'argent. Ensuite, ils perdent de l'argent pour retrouver la santé. Et à penser anxieusement au futur, ils ont oublié le présent de telle sorte qu'ils finissent par non vivre ni le présent ni le futur. Ils vivent comme ils n'allaient jamais mourir et meurent comme ils n'avaient jamais vécu. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. <rires>